in the last week, two times ago, uh, we spoke about how we can describe a history of humankind. According to British archaeologist, uh, Vera Gordon Child, dividing a human history according to three revolutions. The first revolution, agricultural revolution, we spoke about uh, two weeks ago, how appeared the domesticated plants and animals, started with dog and later sheep and goat and uh, barley and wheat, how domesticated by humans, human community in Mesopotamia. And the second, uh, second revolution, second milestone of human history, urban revolution, urban revolution, and the last one, industrial revolution. In uh, today, uh, in the frame of today's lecture, we try to describe the meaning of urban revolution. Okay, which are the condition, precondition of appearance of cities? The first one, domestication. We are over because agricultural revolution performed a domestication of plants and animals. Why is so important the domestication? Because in consequence of domestication, carrying capacity, the people who are able to live in some area increased 54 times. 54 times. Therefore, a domestication, agrarian revolution or agrarianization made a demographic bomb, demographic uprising. The second one, uh, symptom tools of energy conversion will will for for example sailing or windmilling windmills and say, sorry wheel and the sail a wheel for example a wheel for making a coach for transport uh, the different products and the sail for sailing and windmills because on the structure of the, of the windows, the sails which are moving the wheels. The solar calendar. Why so important the solar calendar? Because basically agrarian society organized the verbs based on solar calendar. And the last one, metalworking. Why so important metalworking? Because uh, stone devices not so not inefficient for agrarian work. Necessary to invent the copper, copper was the first one, and later uh, iron. Iron, if we are looking at archaeological point of view, we are living in the iron age. Why? Because the most important uh, uh, most important devices based on different different version of iron. Okay. Which uh, settlement was the first city? The first city, if you open the Bible, a Jericho. Jericho, which uh, located uh, between the Dead Sea and the Jordan Valleys, located somewhere here. This is the uh, longest continuously settled settlement, uh, founded around 9000 before Christ oldest continuously inhabited area. Uh, how many people lived in, uh, in uh, uh, Jericho? In the first layer, archaeological layer, lived 3,000. 3,000 inhabitants, not so much, but compared with the small gatherer uh, hunter community, it's unbelievable, unbelievable. Jericho appeared before agrarian revolution, before agrarian revolution. Jericho, the economic basis of Jericho, based on trade, basically, between the valley of Jordan and, uh, and uh, uh, the uh, harbor and the ports of Mediterranean Sea. If we are looking at Jericho, according to point of view of uh, uh, Gordon Chad, it's not a real city. Why? Because no variety, no uh, somehow uh, a communication, a written communication of economic affairs and political declaration. The first real city was uh, Sumerian cities. But look at the first, uh, how we can define the city? Because definition of city is not so, not so uh, easy. 
If we are looking at the event of city, an urban event, we have to define. This is the most important peculiarity of rational cognition. Uh, in the case of history, there is a protocol, like in the hospital. If somebody uh, bring it into the hospital, there is a protocol, blood test, for example, and, uh, and, uh, and measuring of temperature, and so on. So in the case of history, there is a definition protocol which is the first element of definition of proto uh, definition protocol. Look at the contemporaries who lived in the antiquity, who lived in the Middle Ages, who lived in the modern times. How define a city, the event of city? Look at the forest first. Uh, St. Augustine, one of the most important uh, person of early Christian church, uh, a little bit saved uh, knowledge uh, of late antiquity, defined the city as City is where a forum is kept. There is a forum. Where there is a forum is a city. Why is so important a forum? Because a forum, a central square in the city, is a place of political activity. A, political, a city council organized in the central square. Forum, a forum of political activity. And a market, an economic activity. Therefore, according to very clever, short and very clever definition of St. Augustine, a city, a political and economic center, market and city council. Uh, look at a Hungarian, Hungarian lawyer's definition. A Verbus Istvan who collected a uh, custom law, a uh, contemporary Middle Ages, uh, medieval custom law, defined the city a house is surrounded with necessary walls. It's very important because a city, a real city, a royal city, surrounded with high wall. First one. And on the highest living, there is privileged. Privileged. Privileged means uh, in the citizen may specialize such activity, not a general, in the feudal world like, for example, trade, like, for, for example, bank, banking affairs, financial affairs, exceptional, exceptional, out of feudal world. These are a contemporaries. There are a lot of different definition, contemporary definition, but this definition call attention to crucial element of historical, uh, historical uh, cities. Economic and political center, wall, somehow divide and separate from the surround and privileged status. Good. Look at uh, other, the second phase of protocol, the first, first step of the protocol, look at the contemporaries. And the second step of historical protocol, look at other disciplines, how they define the city. Uh, geography like a history specialized to analyzing of city. There is an urban geography, it's a special branch of uh, the geographical studies. A geography uh, focused to the special, not special, spatial, spatial, space, concerning the space, uh, character and peculiarity of the city. The first element of, uh, uh, of uh, geographical definition, the settlement, the city, one taking advantage of the position of energy the most intensively. Look at Seged, this city. Uh, uh, Indonesian student, no regional. You take a field trip around the Seged, no? Yes. Okay, you have some impression. Which are the geographical energy which rose up a city? The first one, a river, a Tissa river. But I call your attention, Seged, not only uh, a city of Tissa, only the Tissa river, but a Maros, Maros river, Maros river, which came from Transylvania, a lot of thousand kilometers. And in the Middle Ages, Seged was a place of distribution of salt, of salt. Recently, the salt is it's very cheap. Uh, uh, sparse, not so valuable, but on the time of Middle Ages, 
if we are looking at the Hungarian governmental budget, it's calculated approximately in good period half million ducats, gold ducats, half million, uh, six thousand, uh, six hundred thousand ducats, gold ducats, and eight thousand came from salt trade. In the Middle Ages, it's very important, the salt, the salt trade. And the second was one distributing place of salt trade. Came from Transylvania. Came from Transylvania on the Marosh River. This is the, the first one, the first analogy. A river, not only one river, two river, two river. And the Marosh connected the Transylvania very far regions, economic activity to say. This is the first one. And the second one, second one, there is a uh, how there is a, a, a term of river. A term of river. Very interesting. Constructed the bridges, two bridges located on the case of second, the old bridges, old bridge and the new bridge. Why located here? Because in the traditional time, there are no bridges, therefore, necessary to find the best place to cross over the river, find the bending part of the river. Why? Because if we are looking at uh, a, a speed of water, where is the highest speed of the water? In the core area, the central part of the river. Where? where? Because farthest from the bed, the river bed. And in the case of bending, the quickest line, the quickest line moved in, the, in this case northward. Therefore, the speed slowed down in this area. Therefore, in this area, in the case of sedimentation, it's growing down, making a shallow area. Do you know which is the shallow? It's not so big. Therefore, before the bridge's construction, this place was the best place crossing through the river. The traditional man, the traditional people who no possibility walking on the bridge, very clever to identify the best place crossing on the river. Therefore, Seged, in the historical past, was a crossing place on the river, the second one. It's geographical energy, geographical energy. This is the same situation in the case of Budapest. In the case of Budapest, because uh, Budapest, the best place crossing through, the best place all of the Carpathian Basin, <coughs> cross through the river. Why? Because if we are looking at uh, Budapest, location of the Budapest, there is a bed of uh, Danube. Bed of uh, Danube. In the trans area, the western part of the area, there is a mountain region. It's a Buddha region, mountain. But other side, in the Pest, very high level of uh, flat plain. It's named high flat plain. Therefore, even before the water regulation, the people were able to approach the bed without any problem. Why is so important? Because the normal, normal bed of river is basically different. There is a high flat plain, low flat plain, river bed. Low flat plain, high flat plain. Therefore, why so ideal? Because in any other part of Danube, the people who would like to cross through the river necessary to walk on the marshland area, very dangerous, very slow, except Buddha and Pest. Therefore, one of the most important geographical energy, easy to approach the water bed. And constructed ferries, you know which is the ferries. The ferry, everybody know. Ferry, this is a, uh, uh, a, a, a ship, somehow the ship, 
which located two parts of the, of the river side and moved go and back, go and back. Really recently it motorized where there is not a bridge and any other form of the crossing through the river. Therefore, the first one, geographical energy, concentration, focus sizing of geographical energy. In the case of Saget, the crossing place, and Maros and Tisza River. In the case of Danube, it's very high level of floodplain area, high floodplain area, and mountain area, and optimal crossing through the river. Moreover, this is a market line between plain area and between mountain area. Basically different economy of plain and mountain area, and good place mark change the production. Okay, the second one, city and region. To each city, connect a region. Look at, for example, a, a market of uh, Seged. It's a Marshtil. You know, somebody visited in Marshtil? It's, it's possible, uh, I told to you, uh, the history of the marsh. Mars, because it's a uh, uh, Mars is a, a Roman uh, god, a god of uh, war and war for. And why? Because this was the place of operation of local military service and later converted to marketplace and on the socialist epoch, which was the name? Marx. Only one letter changed. Recently and before named to Mars after the Roman Greek and during the socialist epoch only one letter changed. Yeah, very easy and optim optimizing of the changing. Okay, city and region. If you visit to the market, the local uh, uh, alimentation and food market, you can identify the region of Sagan, from which villages came the trader and the producer to Sagan. This is the region. Each city connected not only a unique uh, individual city, but connected a large region. And very important, a function of the city, because each city served function to the region. Uh, three groups of uh, function divided, uh, historically, political and administrative function, economic and cultural and medical function. But exist some cities which are only one function. Look at, for example, Oxford or Cambridge. Only one function, education. In the case of Hungarian history, for example, this is the same in the case of Sáros Patak. Sáros Patak, uh, for long term, only one function. This is the function was education. And the last one, a historical definition. A historical definition. Uh, in the definition, form of the definition, there are two ways. Uh, one way of definition, a long and snake of sentences. A lot of, a lot of words and very complicated construction of the sentences. It's not so easy, uh, but uh, one way, or not so easy to memorize because it's very long and complicated. Other one, I prefer this, fine, this kind of uh, definition, criteria. Look at the criteria, exists, it's good, this is a city, it's not, it's not a city. Or any other form of definition. Look at the definition of city. Uh, this definition of the city I borrowed from the uh, Cambridge Economic History. It's a quite generally accepted uh, manual of historical research. Look at the first definition, first criteria. High number and high density of population is true. In the case of city, high number compared with the villages and, uh, and farms and the smaller settlements, high number, but it's very, very, very different regional uh, peculiarities we can identify. Look at, for example, Norway. Some of them know which is the uh, population limit of city in Norway. Somebody know? And the guess? Nowadays. Norway, Norway. <coughs> no, yeah, but Nor like Norwegian, today. Norwegian, Norwegian. Yeah, but uh, like not in the old times, but now. Even now. Two hundred. Two hundred. A uh, lot of 
other different uh, criteria are uh, on the size of definition of the of the Norwegian cities, but population size side only 200 enough 200 200. In the case of, uh, for example, uh, uh, Greece, uh, one uh, 10,000 10, 10, yeah. In uh, France, three thousand. In the case of Hungary. I know some cities recently no more population than 5,000. 5,000. Not a strict criterion in the case of cities, but quite a lot. In other way, for example, other region, it's a 5,000, not enough for the city status. Uh, and uh, became quite a liberal uh, the donation of the city status because no any income, uh, increase of any income. Uh, after the, the receiving of the, of the city status. But for example, somebody know Tisakechka? It's uh, near to Kechkemi city. It's a Hungarian city. It's a very small, quite a small city. And uh, on the day of uh, donation of the city status, somebody uh, make a graffiti on the table of Tisakechka. This city, uh, this village is city from today. Because very difficult to uh, define exactly which is the real city which are not. Therefore, generally true, but the limit and the, the uh, low limit, lower limit, it's very difficult to define. Look at the second one. The population determine, determining part, not primary producer, not PISA, not PISA, not PISA. But it's generally true because in the city located uh, basically artisans uh, and financial uh, specialists and, and, and intellectuals and so and so. But if we are looking, for example, Hungarian history, a wine yards and wine production in some region able to produce enough income to the city status. For example, Rus, near to Bratislava Pozsony, former Hungarian name, received the city status because the main uh, wine producer located to this city. And the income of wine production enough for city status. In the case of Germany, in the case of Austria, the beer production and the hop production play the same function. Therefore, it's generally true, no primary, not peasant living in the city, but if we are looking much closer, a little bit uh, more closer, we can, we can identify some exceptions. And differentiated society. How differentiated? A city society from the mayor to the beggar, it's large scale. This is the first one. Secondly, in the traditional time, describe the develop, development la developing level of the city according to how many craft there is in the city. For example, in Hungary, the most developed Hungarian city in the Middle Ages was 50 deep, different craft. In Austria, 90. In Germany, 150. Therefore, somehow, this is a slope of development, slope of urbanization somehow. Therefore, differentiated society is true. Region. I spoke about the region. Generally, through each city, there is and there were a region. But define a region not so easy. Look at, for example, a continental city. In the case of continental city, it's very easy, generally. There is a city, and around the city, in concentric circle, there are the region. It's easy. But look at, for example, one port like Amsterdam. Amsterdam. Not so easy to define the region of Amsterdam. Look at one example. In the 17th century, at the end of 17th century, had a great subsistence crisis all of Europe. It's a hunger and shortage, a lot of problem. Therefore, necessary collect every from everywhere food for the cities. And in France, the King 14, who named to King of Sun, uh, organized somehow import 
of wheat and rye, it's cereals, from Great Britain, Britain, to Paris, on coach. It's 1,000 kilometers on coach. 100 kilograms wheat, expense of travel, transport to Britain, Great Britain. Uh, not only Britain, Great Britain is other one, it's a British Isles. Britain, Britain to Paris was 160 livres. Livre, this is the contemporary currency. Not important, only a scale. 100 kilogram wheat, Britain to Paris. On the same time, a Dutch trader imported rice from Africa. You know where located the African, uh, African Dutch colony? South Africa. It's an African or Boer population. A lot of 10,000 miles. Imported from Cape, uh, Cape Town. Cape Town rise to Amsterdam. Much larger distance between South Africa and Amsterdam. And expense of trade from South Africa to Amsterdam 40, 40 livres per 100 kilograms. Why? Because the seaborne trade much cheaper. And on that time, whole of Europe existed 12,000 trading vessels, trading ships, and 6,000 half whole of merchant fleet of Europe sailing under Dutch flag. Therefore, rich Dutch trader imported much cheaper cereals from South Africa than inside of the, of the French kingdom from Brittany to Paris. Therefore, if we are locating the, the expense of, of communication, Cape Town much more part of Amsterdam region than Brittany to Paris. Because the communication and the transport more expensive. But the distance, not the same. Much smaller inside of the France. Therefore, define the region not so easy. Not so easy. And recently, a word quite generally globalized. Quite generally globalized. Okay, and fortification. It's generally true. Generally true. Uh, if you remember the definition of uh, verbuetzi, a wall, of, a wall which separates the peasant and the citizen. Generally true. But if we are looking at the historical past, we can find our uh, exceptions. Look at, for example, Great Britain. Great Britain uh, uh, separate from the continent with the channel and with the continental, with the Atlantic Ocean. Therefore, after the conquering of Wales and Scotland and Ireland, in the case of England, shouldn't construct city wall. Therefore, the English cities save huge quantity of money with the deconstruction of the wall. Why is so important? If we are looking at traditional city, in the case of traditional city, 90% of budget of city, the city budget, used for saving, construction, and uh, uh, and the uh, city girl uh, salary, the expense of the war, 90%. In the case of England, for the island status, didn't necessary to construct war and save huge amount of money. And this was the first amount to the, in, the first investment for save investment to the industrial revolution. Okay. Uh, very important, in this list of definitions, we can find a market. No market. No market. High number 
and the density of population. And uh, density of population, I forward in the case of Norway, a criterion of, of city status that the buildings no farther 200 meters. 200 meters. Somebody visited in Oslo, capital of Norway, no? Unbelievable place. This is the greenest uh, uh, city, whole of Europe. And uh, uh, I read the guide of uh, Oslo that somehow, some, some winter times, the reindeers, you know which is the reindeers, reindeers walking in the city because not realized this is a settlement. Because so large the parks in the Oslo, and therefore the policemen had to guide him out from the city. Uh, because not obvious that this is a, a, a human uh, settlement in consequence of large uh, parking area. Therefore, density of population is other criteria. Okay, but density of population, uh, no peace, uh, differentiated society, region, no market. Why not contain this definition of the market? Because uh, market only one form of allocation of the goods, which is the market. There is a buyer, there is a, a trader, and change the change the change the products uh, after some phase of development uh, with help of the of the money. Uh, this is the market. But beside the market, there are two other form of reallocation of the of the goods. The second one, redistribution. Uh, first empires of the human history based on redistribution. Uh, very easy the function of the redistribution, the state collecting the taxes and redistribute the uh, collected taxes, the budget of the, of the empire according to interest of the uh, empire of the, or the state. Look at for example uh, Egypt. In the case of Egypt, which is the most important strategy? Communication with the gods. Therefore, constructed pyramids from the surplus which produced by Egyptian economy. Therefore, or in the case of China, for example, collected uh, local uh, communities, local villages taxes and bought horses because for the Chinese uh, army necessary uh, cavalry and bought from the nomadic people. Therefore, redistribute according to uh, interest of the state. Therefore, in the case of in the, in the redistribution system, there were and there are recently two levels of economy: a local economy according to interest of villages, and the upper economy according to interest of, of the state of the of the state. And between this level, no any other connection. On the, only the taxes up, down, up. Okay, and the reciprocal forms. A reciprocal forms is possible. A Hungarian student, a student know it's uh, named a palato. It's a, it's a very archaic, archaic, archaic form. For example, uh, after the wedding ceremony, wedding party, a young couple, not enough money for construct a building, but call brothers, uh, relatives, and the friends for working, for working together. And in this system, it's not a market of non redistribution because if somebody who participated in the construction of the building never asked back the service, it's not fault, not moral or not financial, not fault. Because the guiding force of the reciprocal system, the needs, who necessary uh, social environment somehow had to him her or them. Okay, look at the first city, first real city, because Jericho was the real former city, but the real, uh, the, the, the first real city was a Sumerian city. The first uh, generation of, the most important city in the first uh, generation of Sumerian city in Mesopotamia, it's Ur. Uh, you know, uh, King Gilgamesh and story of King Gilgamesh, no? 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 It's an epos epos of, of uh, like, for example, uh, Odyssey uh, and uh, which was the other um, epos of, uh, of uh, Greek history. 
Ilias, okay, Ilias and Odyssey, and a little bit similar. And uh, uh, the key actor of this uh, story are King Gilgamesh. And uh, somebody know who was his closest friend? No? Enkidu. Enkidu. A wide, wide warrior who lived out of the, of the city uh, on, the, on the mountain area. And a wide warrior. And uh, Gilgamesh, King Gilgamesh called a lot of times Enkidu because he was the best uh, warrior of his generation. And uh, uh, first uh, try uh, for, for temptation, it's uh, fall, it's failed, sorry, it's failed. But Gilgamesh finally uh, founded uh, uh, the key of the Enkidu, temptation of the Enkidu. My guess, uh, which uh, temptation? Domesticated Enkidu. Because called Enkidu, come in, come to the Uruk and uh, uh, and uh, and call uh, to be um, Gigamas uh, told to him uh, to be my my friend and my warrior. But it was a, 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 a free warrior and uh, didn't want to serve uh, anybody. Which was the form of the temptation which chained somehow. The first one, wine. Wine. A red wine, you know. Uh, offered because on the mountain area in the hunting gathering society no wine. Wine? One fingerprint of civilization. Why? And which was the second device of temptation? civilized woman. And we can find the key of the wide barriers until recently. Okay, but look at the city. Uh, the Sumerian city basically different from the modern city because uh, a Sumerian city it's a large area surrounded with walls. But inside of the walls only small area are constructed and set the area. Why? Because inside of the wall, necessary to save not only the people who are lived in the city, but the flocks and the herds. A lot of animals which uh, uh, had in the uh, around the around the city. Therefore, it's a security, a, a, a safe place somehow was a uh, synonym of the city. And very interesting, on the Sumerian period, in front of the city, there was not a villages, but the wide area, the wilderness. The wilderness and the city, which was the, the synonym of the civilization. No villages. The first form of the civilization appeared in the form of the cities. It's individual cities, uh, under direction one local king. And if we are looking, for example, Uruk, nine kilometer long wall around the city, only a tiny area, it's uh, constructed and built area, uh, 100 hectares, and the population, unbelievable, compared with the Jericho, 3,000 inhabitants lived only in Jericho, here, 50 to 60,000 inhabitants lived. Uh, the second phase of urbanization, appearance of empires. Not individual city-state, but empire which organized large areas, city-states. The first, one of the first example, Babylon. Babylon. Uh, this is the Ishtar, Ishtar Gate. Ishtar, one god of the Babylonian religious uh, pantheon. And somebody know there is uh, recently the Easter Gate. Unbelievable in Berlin. Majority of Mesopotamian culture located to Louvre, in France, in Paris, Berlin and London. This is the colonial history. This is the consequence of colonial history. Okay. Uh, appear in the uh, stepping on the on the onto the history uh, empires appear a first specialized city, a capital, capital of large area. 
The second specialized city, a force on the boundary area of the Babylonian Empire, locating a great military bases. Like, for example, here, uh, Ekbatana. Ekbatana it was a, a huge military base, and majority of people, soldiers, lived inside of the city, a specialized city, a force. And the third, a uh, trade, a trading city. A Phoenician cities was the first uh, uh, specialized trading cities. Uh, very interesting and very uh, special uh, uh, legal system of the of the early antiquity. Uh, no legal system which saved the foreign people. Therefore, the trade reliable and uh, and safe place are nobody's area. All of the empire and the Phoenician cities, Pyplos, Sidon, and Tyros, located out of empire. Everybody uh, able to visit in this area because everybody foreign uh, in these uh, uh, cities, Phoenician cities. Okay, how we can define the potential uh, rate of urbanization? This diagram uh, show uh, uh, quite good. It's uh, uh, urbanization potential, the carrying capacity and actual non-urban population density and the gap between the carrying capacity and the, and the rural population, this is the urbanization potential of some area. If you are looking at city, according to not a definition and not a early forms, but a, in general uh, concept, we can define according to the definition of urban broader open city, a closed city, and a subject city. How? An uh, open city, like, uh, for example, uh, Aten. You know, Polis Aten. It's a it's recent the capital of, uh, of, uh, of Greece. If we are looking at historical Aten, in the historical Aten has had, sorry, three districts. Aten, the city, Piers, Piers, the port and the harbor, and the rural area of the city state. If somebody had Athenian citizenship, the location no any meaning. Maybe living in Piers, Athen or the rural area, the same quality of the citizenship was. This heritage continued the Roman Empire. You know, for example, the uh, history of St. Paul. St. Paul. St. Paul, one of the apostles of, uh, of uh, the early Christian church. He had Roman citizenship. But he lived in Jerusalem. It's not important. In the case of open city, the location, never influence the quality of the citizenship. An uh, Athenian citizen might live everywhere. The quality was the same. Roman citizen the same. This was the citizenship of antiquity. But look at the Middle Ages. In the case of Middle Ages, uh, me medieval cities in the feudal world a small island. Inside of the city, the people live according to citizens' legal system. Out of city wall, feudal law directed the everyday life of human. Therefore, a Middle Ages produced a closed cities. Inside of the wall and outside of the wall basically different legal system directed to humans the contemporary life. And the submitted or subjected cities, the modern cities. It's mean the country's legal system concern everywhere. No exception. No exception. If somebody living in Sagar, living on the same under the same legal system than every other citizens in the country. Therefore, 
no exception, no privilege status in the modern time. Okay, continue. The most uh, typical city and the city-based empire is the Roman Empire. Look at a short survey about the evolution of Roman Empire. This is a uh, map, animation, how increased, this is the date before Christ, how increased the size of Roman Empire. Started around the Rome, and the first day conquered the coastline of the Mediterranean Sea, and later in Ger uh, Germania and uh, Brittany and uh, uh, Pannonia in the Carpathian Basin. And it's destruction. Okay, look at again. Here, starting step by step, central part of Italy. Italian peninsula and northern, northwestern part and Greece and southern part of the uh, southern part of the Africa, uh, southern part of the Mediterranean, in northern Africa, and this is the largest one, largest uh, uh, size of the Roman Empire. Look at which were the basis of success of the Roman Empire. Basically, if we are looking at uh, a uh, long term, long durée, long duration history of the Roman Empire, uh, environmental aspect, we have to focus on three peculiarities. The first, the capital. Very important memorize that size of the Rome, until the Industrial Revolution, no any other settlement was able to reach. Because population of Rome, Rome the capital, of Roman Empire, one, two, five million. One to five million. Until the 19th century, no largest city hall of the world. Very interesting. It, it, and call attention that the history not linear, not linear, not growing and not improving century by century, but there is up and down, up and down. And the level, the population level, and the, the global urban service level, the humankind wasn't able to reach for almost two millennia. The second one, the road and the communication and the transporting system and the Roman economy. Look at the first Rome. According to legendary, uh, a Rome founded in three, uh, 700, uh, 750 free uh, before Greece and the optimal location for conquering and forming this empire because almost the focus of the, of the uh, Mediterranean Sea. Uh, and very important advantage of uh, forming a foreign empire a quite homogeneous climate, quite homogeneous uh, uh, ecological uh, basis and a cultural coherence of the, of the Mediterranean Sea. Uh, the second innovation of the Roman Empire, the construction of the roads, the Roman roads. And the Roman roads, it's a quite a, a complicated engineering construction. If we are looking, for example, uh, and uh, the deep, uh, very deep dive and filled with uh, different and changing level of, uh, of, uh, uh, of stone and, uh, and uh, how the name is, sable. And, uh, and form stone, and basically it's closed. The function of the uh, of the of the of the Roman roads uh, uh, supporting of military operation. This was the first function. If we are looking, for example, the most important roads of uh, Italian peninsula, it's quick moving of Roman legions. But the second function, a trade, a trade, and uh, on that time not heavy coaches, not heavy coaches. Uh, it's light coaches uh, uh, transported in these roads and uh, by paddle walking no more and, uh, and the horseback, on the horseback. Okay, look at the economy of empire. If we are looking at economy of empire, this is a typical agrarian empire. 90% 90 90 of uh, income 
and the budget of uh, empire based on uh, based on agrarian production which is the peculiarity of agrarian production no great miracle in the agrarian production no possibility for huge increase of production 10 person up 10 person down this was the general rhythm of, uh, of uh, uh, changing of efficiency of the production. If we are looking at uh, how functioned agrarian, uh, agriculture of Roman Empire, three forms of uh, agrarian uh, factory, agrarian activity had in that time. The first forms, uh, probably you know the Gladiator, the movie of Gladiator with Russell Crowe, you know? Gladiator, the movie of Gladiator. And you remember a uh, uh, main actor, uh, uh, Ma Maximus, I remember the general Maximus, it's a soldier, it's an officer. But which is the general, uh, uh, how the name is, the general, uh, general vision about the, the typical and the good Roman Rom Rom people? It's a Pisa, who are walking in the wheat, in the field of the wheat, and taking the pike with the hands. The typical Roman, a Pisa. And the Max, General Maximus, it's a vision, I am going home and I will work like a Roman, a typical Roman uh, Pisa. Uh, and the, the basis, the elementary, elementary construction of the, of the Roman state are farms. And farms and the family are based in living on the farms. Later, when formed a uh, empire, a Roman empire, form a new form of construction. It's named Latifundia. It's a huge agrarian uh, farm based on work force of slaves, a slave, a slavery, a slavery. This is the new forms of agrarian production appear on the time of uh, uh, empire, imperial, empire's period. And the last one, a uh, veteran farm. A veteran, old soldier. Somebody know how long served in the region a soldier? How, how many years? Somebody know? No? 25. 25 years long. 25. A professional soldier. 25. And if survive a long service term, receive a farm. And which area located are uh, veteran farms? In the boundary area. Why? Because in the political situation, reactivated the veterans and participated in the differential works, differential uh, fight uh, on, for the saving of boundary and the limes. You know, the limes. This is the fortified, uh, the fortified boundary area. Okay, these were the three forms of the three forms of the agrarian production. Very interesting. Uh, how occupied a new conquered area? This show the circle how the Roman uh, Roman, uh, uh, Roman farmers occupied, for example, uh, uh, recently French area and focused to the valley of Rome because it's optimal for uh, communication and the training and the uh, conquered people, the Gorgos, uh, the Gallic people uh, left on the mountain area. Okay? Uh, very important natural uh, climate uh, supporting event of the uh, conquering of uh, Roman Empire, the Roman climate optimum, quite warm period. Uh, Roman climate optimum started uh, in the middle of uh, last century before Christ and closed 4000 Anno Domini. Uh, the basic question, why was able a uh, Roman Empire conquer a uh, whole of the French and the Gaul area and the Britain? The uh, answer for this question because this period, the period of conquering a quite warm, quite warm climate period. Its name, uh, 
ground climate optimum, how we can verify this warming period. The first one, olive trees grew in the Rhine valleys. It's northern part of the, not the central part of the Germany, and vineyards and the wine production appear not only in Britain but even in Pannonia. And very interesting, Pannonia it's a western part of uh, recent Hungary. It's other part of the uh, of the Danube. And the wine, which located by Romans after the collapse of Roman Empire, survived until the Hungarian conquering. It's indicator. It's a uh, indicator of the vegetation, which indicated that the climate on this period, Roman period, much warmer. For example, uh, uh, Roman buildings which constructed in Pannonia, no heating system, no heating system. In classical Mediterranean buildings, even now, no heating system, not necessary, not necessary. And this form of the uh, buildings function even in Pannonia. And the other indicator, other evidence which verify that uh, uh, Roman Empire, Roman uh, warming period appeared even in the continental part of, uh, of, uh, of uh, uh, Europe, a construction of the Roman uh, bridge in, on the Iron Gate. Somebody visited in the Iron Gate? Iron Gate? Okay, look at Iron Gate located here. The Danube, which starts in the Black Forest and arrives to the Black Sea, here it's crossed through the Carpathian Mountain. Therefore, the bed of river is very small and very deep the water. And the uh, uh, Roman engineers was able to construct a bridge and on this bridge conquer a Transylvanian area. Why is it so important? Because if the Danube, Danube is a quite large river, if the Danube frozen over, the, uh, the, uh, on the time of uh, melting, surely uh, uh, ice cover should to be uh, destroy the pillars of the, of, the, of the bridges. But on the time of using of Roman bridge on the Iron Gate, Iron Gate probably never frozen over the Danube. Somebody know when frozen over the Danube last time? Nobody? A thousand years ago. Uh, last time frozen over quite far, uh, 1963. I remember because this is the date of my birth. <laughs> uh, but uh, this was the last one. But historically, before the water regulation, the Danube, for example, in the 19th century, one or two times per decade, 10, 10, 10 years, frozen over. But in this period, on the time of construction of Roman Bridge, on the Iron Grave, probably never. Because it's very fragile. A lot of pillars necessary to, uh, to, to how the name, decrease the size of the bed on the deep, part of the, of the river bed. Okay. Uh, finally, a Roman Empire to the late Middle Ages, late uh, antiquity, it's collapsed. Look at the reason why it collapsed, why it wasn't able to wasn't able, uh, survive uh, this uh, uh, historical construction. Uh, look at first the contemporaries. Uh, opinion about it. Because this is the history and protocols, look at the contemporaries first, and only secondly, look at the, uh, look at the opinion of the, of the history. Uh, first one, invasion. Of course, invasion of, uh, of, uh, uh, of uh, barbarians, like if you uh, saw the uh, radiator, uh, the, the first uh, battle of the gladiator, you remember, this is the starting scene of the, of the movie. Uh, uh, it's uh, located to Vindobona. Vindobona, you know, which uh, is the name of this uh, uh, settlement recently? Vindobona. This is the battle of Vindobona, starting scene of uh, gladiator. Vienna, Vienna, Austria, capital of Austria. Okay, but uh, invasion. 
invasion of the barbarians. But the second one are several epidemics. Several epidemics. Why so important? Because epidemics somehow indicator of underfeeding. Underfeeding. You know which is the underfeeding. There are two kinds of underfeeding we can identify. A quantitative underfeeding, not enough calorie, and the qualitative underfeeding, not enough trace element, nutrition and, uh, and uh, the fine element of the, of the foods. Uh, uh, epidemics, every time, indicator, and the pandemism, not the, in the modern time, but in the traditional time, uh, are underfeeding, somehow, of prices of the food uh, production. Weak and overstuffed uh, over administrative infrastructure, which is the reaction of the administration to the crisis, Increase the number of employees in the administrative, in the civil and, uh, and military size. And which is the consequence of, uh, of uh, uh, growing of uh, administration? Increase the taxes, heavy burden uh, for government, army, and uh, in such light, a large territory. And important, according to contemporaries, important reason of the crisis an incompetent emperor. Uh, yeah, it's possible, it's about the reason of the crisis, but on that time, if you know uh, the history of the late Roman Empire, uh, general ruling uh, uh, period of the, of the, of the uh, emperor, on that time, it's very short, one and a half year only. Why? Because kill each other, it poisoned or, or physical, uh, physical form of the killing, uh, but not enough time for perform a real program of them. Okay, this is the opinion of uh, contemporaries for crisis. But look at a little bit more rational, more uh, professional manner of, uh, of uh, crisis. Uh, Tater, John Adam Tater, it's a very important and seminal uh, British uh, historian, uh, try to uh, describe and rationalize a uh, crisis of, uh, of, uh, of uh, civilization uh, and separated three reasons, three group of reasons. The first one, resource and environmental problems. Generally, resource and environmental problems play uh, important role in the crisis. Second, conflict between nations and between folks and social and political disturbances. Uh, if we are looking uh, uh, according to the perspective of Tainter, uh, one of the most important problems that social political system require energy, uh, maintain the investment infrastructure uh, and uh, society necessary to act in together. And in this period, the late period, the Roman Empire too large, and the common interest a uh, far area wasn't able to accept. Therefore, the interest of, interest of Hispania, Iberian Peninsula, interest of uh, Greece, interest of northern part of Africa, so different that these, uh, these uh, uh, tensions uh, somehow disturb the everyday function of, uh, of empire. Uh, and uh, very important uh, 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 weakness of the late Roman Empire the decrease of information gradient. Somebody know which is the inform information gradient? No? Uh, you remember the gladiator. In the beginning of the battle, two officers, General Maximus and uh, uh, officer of uh, Praetorians, you know, the bodyguards of the, of the, of the emperor, the Praetorians, discuss with, with each other. And the General Maximus told to the, of the, the head of the Praetorians, the Barbarians lost the battle. Before the beginning of the battle, lost the battle. Why? Because one side, the Barbarians, very brave, but other side, cavalry, archery, and, 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 and uh, infantry, and different part of the army able to collaborate with each other. Other side, no strategy. Running in front of the enemy, no any other. Therefore, at the beginning, before the beginning of the battle, the barbarian lost. Why? Because one side 
the well organized logistical, good logistical based uh, army, other side barbarians only, white barbarians. But this is the informational gradients. Intellectual potential on the side of Roman army and the barbarians lower. But in the following centuries, to be legionnaire, it's very bad profession. It's very hard life and very easy to die. Therefore, a lot of barbarians from the boundary area moving inside of the empire and became regional. Why? It's guest worker. Good job for them because receive a Roman citizenship, pension, became a veteran, receive a uh, Latifundia, receive a estate, and this is a lot of barbarians receive good military education in the Roman army. And later, a lot of guest worker barbarians moving back to the tribal area of barbarians. Therefore, a lot of barbarians able to fight Roman manner first. Secondly, on that time, if writing a peace treaty between, for example, German and the Roman Empire, used the system of hostage. You know which is the hostage. Change the children of the aristocracy. A Roman senator's family's child moved to barbarians as hostage and the tribal priests moved to Rome. Changed. Why? Because this was the guarantee to the keeping of peace. If somebody broke the peace, killed the hostage. This was the guarantee. Therefore, a lot of barbarian princes received Roman education. Therefore, century by century, the informational gradient equalized. Therefore, the advantage of Roman Empire decreased compared with the barbarians. This was one, one of the reasons of the collapse of Roman Empire, because barbarians, not only the upper but the lower level, learned to fight Roman money. And the climate deterioration, because a Roman warming period closed. Good. Uh, we will use uh, some form of the theorem, uh, some form of the general theory. For example, good general theory we can use only everyday life and the historical example. Uh, Arnold Toysby, challenge and answer theory. You know this challenge and answer theory? No? Uh, okay. Nobody? No. Okay. Uh, Arnold Toysby uh, wrote one book series about the human history, from the beginning to the contemporary, it's a 70s, 17 volumes, a long history, and uh, constructed such theory which you say about in the antiquity, in the Middle Ages, and the modern time too. One of his most flexible theory, challenge and answer, it's we can use personal, community, and the global level. Time by time, one person, one uh, uh, force of civilization level, appearing time by time a challenge. And do these challenges might be take answer. And only separated three types of answer. Look at the first. First type of answer. Look at the Roman Empire, approaching the barbarians, which is the traditional answer. Mobilizing allegiance, like happened in the case of Battle of Vindobona, and pushing back the barbarians. But look at, for example, on the life of student. Uh, exam, this is a challenge. Which is the traditional answer for the exam? Learning. This is the traditional way of solution. Okay, first type of answer, the traditional solution of the, of the, of the uh, challenge. 
Look at that sometimes the traditional manner of challenge didn't work. Therefore, necessary to try a new way of solution. Second type of answer. Second type of answer, innovation. On the time, on the time of the uh, age of migration, a western part of the Roman Empire broken down. Broken down. But some construction of the Roman Empire saved the values of the Roman Empire. Like a Christian church, which is the official language of the Roman Catholic Church, Latin. Save the language. And very interesting, there is a language commission in Vatican which constructs a new words in Latin to mobile phone, to space shuttle, television. Why? Because necessary on the, Roman, on the time of Roman Empire wasn't the space shuttle. And according to uh, logic of the logic of the uh, of the Latin language constructed mobile and the new te technological invention and somehow of innovation or other side innovation was a mercenary a long mercenary service uh, second type answer innovation somehow innovation and very important in the case of innovation very important a small innovative teams role. Like for example Roman Catholic Church on the time of collapse of Roman Empire. Save the legal system, the Roman legal system, save the language, save the clause. Look at for example a priest of the Roman Catholic Church. It's wearing the fashion of Roman Empire. And very interesting, a lot of different churches save the fashion when founded. Look at, for example, in Hungary, Hungary uh, quite, quite a, a, a large uh, community living in the, uh, the, the church of uh, Calvinist church, it's named a uh, reformed church, the style of the, 19th, of the 16th century. Say, somehow frozen down on the fashion, on the foundation. And it's happened with the Roman Catholic Church. Innovation. Uh, and this is the same case, for example, in the case of exam. The traditional answer is a learning, but if not function, you can see some kind of innovation. For example, uh, some years ago, uh, 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 a student from Azerbaijan uh, started the written exam, take one mobile phone and started to find answer. I told to him that it's not legal, sorry. And re reflect, re his reflection was, yeah, I know, I know, but I don't know the answer. <laughs> and found, and found uh, in the mobile the, 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 the good answer. And ask him take to the table your phone. Some minutes because I, I read uh, one of my book and realized there is a second mobile on the head of student <laughs> and unfortunately only two of uh, mobile he had therefore no continue took, took on the table and it didn't uh, have strict consequences and received a, received a pass grade survived this uh, uh, answer uh, this uh, exam with the second type answer some form of innovation and the third type of answer collapse which happened with the Roman Empire and which may happen with the student pay the exam that it's it's very simple very simple construction but very flexible we can use a lot of different situation a personal situation a community situation uh, and we can this we, we can analyze uh, uh, very simple manner, uh, a very complicated situation. First type of answer, second type of answer, innovation and the role of, uh, of the innovative teams, minorities, and the third type of answer, a collapse. Okay, uh, time is expired. We will continue in the last uh, next week, uh, and uh, the example which we will uh, analyze is. Uh,
a collapse of from empire and formation of the Middle Ages. Okay, thanks a lot for your attention.